Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon Geeky Sparkle sending this video out, doing some stuff for the holidays, for New Year's Eve. Happy New Year's Eve. Hollywood is being accused of stealing IP from artists, from stealing artwork. This happens a lot, especially with the advent of the internet. It's very easy to Google images, and uh, you know a lot of people are gonna find some similarities between their work and work that appears in movies or on merchandise. But in this case, it looks like they actually did lift this stuff. So we're gonna talk about The Witcher being accused of lifting this artist's artwork for back, uh, background props, uh, The Witcher blood origin. Not the worst thing it's been accused of, for sure. I mean, the show is complete garbage, but now it's got another but now there's another layer of controversy, right? So let's uh, let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Almost uh, almost 284,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, greatly appreciated. We've been talking about The Witcher and The Witcher Blood Origin, which has really been destroyed by critics and fans alike. It is one of the worst uh, audience reviews ever, I think. One of the worst audience scores ever. Uh, for a Netflix show, and uh, a lot of people don't like this show for a variety of reasons. But now we're going to add another layer to that. We're going to accuse this show of lifting this guy's artwork. This guy is uh, Sean Koss. Koss? Koss? Uh, Geeky sent this over to me earlier today. He's saying that apparently the new Witcher Netflix series has my artwork in it without my permission. Uh, summoning my boy Boss Logic, who do I need to reach out to on this situation? Honestly, this happens a lot, but only twice on this scale. First, the creative department at Juice World having me create art uh, only to ghost me and hire someone else to make a 3D rendered version. And now this. So sorry this happened to you, says Melanie Mack. Must be frustrating. Yeah, definitely aggravating, but also didn't realize it was going to get this much attention. So let's see. Let's see the comparison here. So uh, I'm still baffled by why large corporations like Netflix plagiarize other artists' work says Debs, not good enough. So here we go. This is the comparison. Here's his art. Here's what appeared on these uh, um, tapestries, uh, skins behind the elf character, I guess. Yeah, it looks pretty similar to me. I mean, this is, um, I mean, it's not exact. And they'll probably, but even like, look, look the way that the, middle here is kind of angled. It's not an exact replica, but it's pretty damn close. So what probably happened is, is uh, the production designer probably went out and uh, Googled certain kinds of images looking for certain things. Um, but yeah, there are some differences, which they probably could argue this is not an exact copy. Uh, this person here says the characters look similar, but considering that ha the hands have exactly the same form and also position shows this is blatant plagiarism. I see very different pictures all around. No, I mean, this I, I think they're it's definitely influenced. I'm the last one to defend the shitty series of Netflix. This is uh, a bit far reached. You cannot copyright a skull. The alien face with no features was done 100 times before. Well, that's the thing. I mean, again, people can take artwork from the internet, they can make tweaks to it and say that, hey, it's it wasn't lifted exactly. But it's very possible that, that there was influence here, right? Uh, they're different. It's not the case. Uh, Sean has stolen art from the last 500 years, so he needs to find the first person ever to draw an animal skull and give credit and money. I don't know. I think he's got a pretty good case, but I don't think, I mean, look at even the way that the cheekbones are on the alien face in particular. The shading, I mean, I, I it, it's, yeah, the collarbone, the lighting, all of that, it's pretty damn close, right? It's pretty damn close. But, I mean, I don't think he has any recourse, to be honest. Uh, he said, yeah, I'm sure they found an artist who used my designs as their own, so the show may not have known the wiser, but it's still unfortunate seeing how I've always wanted to be involved in the films. And this has happened multiple times. We have friends of ours who have actually had their artwork lifted before for, uh, Official or unofficial merchandise. I know that uh, our friend Kevin Bulk has had his art lifted multiple times. We've done videos on that. And in a lot of cases, the companies buying the art don't realize where 
the inspiration came from. And I think it's going to be get, I, I'm going to be honest, it's going to get a lot more complicated with AI art coming into it too, because now you can generate pictures that could have bits of another person's artwork in it, you know, images that have bits of another person's artwork in it and say, well, this is AI generated. You know, it's, it's not actually their art. And again, you really don't have recourse because you can't copyright those images necessarily because they're not unique enough to copyright, but it's still aggravating. So this isn't, this is hardly the first time. I mean, honestly, this has happened. Uh, we did a video before talking about Disney in particular, stealing artwork from creators. And in fact, they apparently were stealing, uh, you know, 3d models. Uh, this guy had done a 3d model of the drummer from the enchanted Tiki room and there were little things that he put in the uh, render that weren't on the original statue. And yet they turned around, they took his render and they started selling it in the park and he called them out on TikTok. And uh, yeah, apparently the person who did this, who signed their name to it was like an art director or something for Disney. And that was, that was a big deal. I remember that made the rounds and they're like, look, just even the way I carved, you know, these markings into the face. That's, you know, just my little flourishes. I added connecting these rings. That's not how it actually looked. And they just basically lifted the, uh, the design. And, you know, speaking of Disney lifting designs too, there, you know, and again, we did a video on this one too. There was a, uh, behind the attraction episode talking about the Hollywood tower of terror. And they apparently lifted, uh, this guy's map of, or diagram of how the Tower of Terror actually works and they put it into the show. Now, the producer of the show uh, apologized and said that he got it from a third party and actually put this guy, uh, James St. Onge, Onge, put his name on the credits of the show. But I mean, this does happen. This is the thing. Like, it's very hard to keep track of every artist turning in freelance work. And a lot of times these people just want to get stuff done. It could have been the case uh, just in Netflix's defense that they basically just hired an artist or freelancer or somebody to create this tapestry art, the, uh, the cave paintings or whatever they are on the, the skins. And they didn't know where the stuff actually came from. And the person actually got that via a Google search, which might have led them to Sean's art here. Uh, I don't think he has any recourse, but again, this is another, you know, almost, a, yeah, almost 400,000 views. This is just another wrinkle, another uh, stain on the, the uh, shit show that is the Witcher blood origin to have this on top of everything else. Not a good look, right? Not a good look, but I, I do think it, it could be an honest mistake, at least on the showrunner's part, uh, to be fair. And I do think that things are going to get a lot more complicated going forward because of, you know, the increased use of AI art and all of that jazz. So we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later.